What's up guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. I'm currently here in Boston, which has absolutely no correlation to the video you're going to see right now, which is in Austin, Texas. But I just thought this is a really cool view of the Boston skyline. So um, I just forgot to record an intro for this video. Big shout out to the people who bought action on staking because I'm selling action on there for no markup for these cash games. So if you want a small sweat, whether it's going to be $5 or all the way up to like $1,000 or $5,000, you can feel free to do that on stakekings.com. Anyways, uh, that's the intro for today. We're gonna get into the session, play some poker, play some cards against the local Texan folk, and let's try to spin it up. We're playing 100, 200, and sometimes 400 straddle is on. We got the stand-up game, and it's down to the final two players, myself and our buddy Mariano. The last person to win a hand owes the table a bunch of money, so let's go to battle here. Mariano starts off with a limp, of 200. Terrace then raises to 700 and I look down at King Jack offsuit and re-raise to 2400. Overall, I think it's a very good hand to raise and secondly, I'm incentivized too because I just want to win the pot. Anyways, Yuchan calls 2400, Mariano calls as well and Terrace ends up folding which is pretty interesting. Anyways, we're getting a three ways to a flop of Jack, seven, six, all clubs. Top pair, but having all clubs is a little scary considering I don't have one. Yu Chan checks and then Mariano decides to lead out here for a bet of 4,000. Very surprised and interesting to see this, to be honest. I suspect he's really just trying to win this pot and obviously not lose a stand up game. But with top pair, I do just have to stick around and call. So we're going to see a turn when Yu Chan folds. It is the eight of clubs. Uh, not really a good turn card to see. Four clubs on the board and it goes check, check. River is the six of spades. Now the board is paired and maybe I'm starting to think if I could bluff or not considering I have a jack, block some full houses and random stuff. So not really sure what to do, but Mariano decides to throw out a bet of 8,000. Uh, this is a kind of annoying here. Do I really want to get spicy right off the bat on the stream? Well, YOLO. Let's just do it. I want to win that button. I don't want to lose that stand-up game. And like, I don't expect to be uh, winning ever here if I call. So it's either a raise or fold. And let's put some chips into the middle. I just have to raise it up to 24K and luckily see a snap fold by Mariano. Phew, I win this one. I don't lose a stand-up game. And we're moving in the right direction here in the first hand. In the following spot, I see a suited wheel ace. Ace four of hearts. It's a pretty one. I raise it up to $600 with the $200 straddle on. Alex defends. So we're going to a flop of seven, three deuce, two clubs and a heart. He checks it over to me here and I just have to fire out 1100 with a gut shot straight draw. And for 1100, it is going to get a call from him. So I'm putting him on some sort of seven or a flush draw. Anyways, we're going to a turn, which is the queen of hearts. Pretty sick card to see here as I turn the back door. Also have a combo draw to go along with my hand. Anyways, he checks it over to me and I decide to go big once again to continue blasting. I mean, I have more equity and we're gonna fire out 5,100. I'm really just trying to fold out all of the strong hands that he could have, like a pair of sevens. Uh, I think I can easily fold out all the flush draws he can have, so that's not a problem here. But Alex ends up tank calling. Oh God, hoping for a fold, obviously, but that didn't end up happening. Time to get there on the river, please. Help me, dealer, it is the king of clubs. Damn it. Not the improvement I was looking for, but this card isn't so bad for a lot of my hands that I could have. I could have two pairs. I could have clubs. I could just have a king now at this point. I mean, having hearts in my hand isn't amazing, but I'm only sitting with ace high. And like I said, I'm only putting him on some sort of seven or a random queen of some sort. So when he checks it over to me, I've got a blast and just try to win this pot. I fire out $9,000 into the middle. And the only thing that's going on in my head is please, please fold. He stares at me the whole time trying to get a read off me of some sort. I'm just trying to stare at the board and look as still and calm as possible. But it looks like he got some sort of soul read out of me. Shit, because he calls. Owning my soul with a seven. I guess all of that hardcore staring paid off from Alex as he wins a 32k pot off me. Very unfortunate here. Nice start to the session with the first hand. Not a nice one in the second one. Let's try to rebound now off the ill timed bluff with pocket aces. Lovely spot here. Mariana opens it up to 1200 with the $400 straddle out now. And when action folds to me, happy to three bet our buddy here. I make it 3600 on the button. Action fold all the way back to Mariana who finds another raise. Wow, music to my ears and he makes it 9200. 
This is simply what dreams are made of. Sitting with aces, I'm getting re-raised again, and we're playing pretty deep stacked with over $100,000 effective. So in this position, I think it's just the perfect time to put in yet another raise. I mean, out of all the hands that I could have to try to put as much money into the middle, I'm going to say this is going to be one of them. So I make it another raise and bump it up to 18 and a half thousand. Basically, uh, min raise over his raise, uh, lots of raising and re-raising and more re-raising going on. It's kind of hard to keep track of how many raises that's happened in this hand so far. But here we've got a situation because Mariano makes the call and we've got a pretty big flop building. I mean, a lot of money going in, almost 40k in the middle, and we see a flop of ace nine seven two hearts oh my god top set is pretty sick and as exciting as it is i actually don't know how i'll ever get paid here to be fair i think mariano is going to have a lot of strong hands like kings queens a lot more often than he'll have ace king like that because you know i have two aces in my hand and there's already one on the board now so for that reason when mariano checks over me i throw out a really small bet of eight thousand very, very small as I would do it with all of my hands and very, very small because I don't really know what he can call with. Anyways, um, this hand actually goes even further because he does make the call versus the small bet, something I really don't expect. I don't expect to receive a lot of action here, but when we're going to a turn, which is the seven of hearts, my goodness, flush complete. I boat up. I don't think I can ever lose this hand as he's never going to have pocket sevens here. And I still can't possibly think of a hand that Mariano has that can call a big bet. So when he checks it over to me again, I'm going to go once again, pretty small, uh, $11,000 into the middle. It's about a 20% pot bet because like I said, I can't lose this hand and I don't know what can even call me. So let's just go small and see what happens. Anyways, Mariano calls again. So this is pretty wild. We've got a pretty big pot building and now Mariano has less than a pot sized bet behind. The river comes another board pair. It's an eight. Wow. Really tricky spot now. I think I lose two, I guess two combinations of quads, but that's not something to really be concerned about considering it's a five bet pot. Mariano checks one more time and I just take my time to figure out what I want to do. And I think an all in makes the most sense. I mean, I'm obviously very, very strong here. It can look super bluffy and I'm still for a third time, not sure what hand can call, but if he has a good enough hand to call the flop and turn, maybe he has a good enough hand to call an all in. So I announce all in and this puts our buddy into a pretty tough spot. He tanks forever and thinks out loud. And I just sit here and pray for a call. And it just seems like he has what I would consider a very unlikely ace. So ultimately, he does end up just finding the fold. So I don't get paid. But what a strange hand and strange spot to be in in a five bet pot. I don't get the maximum here, but I do make a very, very solid amount in this hand, surging me up well over $40,000 on the session. What a swingy, swingy session. I win the first hand, lose the second one, and I win piles in the next one. And there's no time to breathe because just 20 minutes later, I pick up aces again. This time the hijack raises to 300 bucks. The button makes the call and I'm in the small blind. Time to bump things up pretty big. I make it $1,800 over the raise and call. And it seems like neither are scared money as both of them come along for a call. So we're going to a flop, which comes in 963 rainbow. Wow. Very low, disconnected, dry flop here out of position against everyone. I decided to check this. Uh, Multi-way, kind of scary to put a lot of money in the middle on this kind of board, three-handed. So out of position, I start off with a check. And now Alex throws out a pretty large bet of 3K. And then just surprisingly enough, Terrace Min raises me to 6K. Oh my goodness, back onto me and I'm very confused with what's happening here. Do they both have a set? Um, do they both just have two pair, a strong hand? I don't really know because there's not many two pair combinations that make sense. And I think calling the 6K here is very, very weird. I also think folding here probably makes a lot of sense, but also feels very, very wrong. And I don't think any of my options feel good because either I can raise, fold, or call and all three seem really bad, but you know, there's always one option that is more enticing than the rest. And that's to put more money into the middle. Even though I'm not loving it, I decided to three bet to 14,000. It's uh, another basically min click over 
the $6,000 min raise. And now action back onto Alex, who doesn't snap fold, which is so concerning. Actually, he doesn't look like he's folding at all. And after a minute or two, he decides to announce all in. And his all in is like $70,000. Jesus, that is massive. Terrace looks frustrated and ends up letting his cards go. And now I'm like very, very frustrated at this situation. Like what's happening? I don't understand how Terrace can min raise and now just fold with not a whole lot behind. So I just snap fold myself. Uh, pretty annoyed at the situation because I lost $14,000 on the flop here. I guess now that I see the cards, lucky that it was the right fold, I guess. Um, wish I was able to find the fold in the flop before losing the 14K, to be honest. But nice hand to Alex. This guy is just owning me. But deservingly so if you're playing the 6-3 suited. If you thought that that last hand was played pretty poorly, well, I've got some better news for you because I'm going to be in Vegas for the WPT Win World Championships all next month in December. So if you want to get a crack at some free money and catch some punts, I'll be there playing all the tournaments, some cash games as well. And uh, you can come join me because it's going to be a wonderful time. Last year, I loved it because, well, I won a tournament and that was really fun. But this year, they're going to have a 10K, $40 million guarantee. It's going to be huge. It's going to be fun. And if you're in a country that WPT Global serves, they're going to be running satellites for this event for basically uh, every single day and big Sundays every single week, giving away like 10 to 15 different packages. So if you want to get a chance to saddle your way into the 10K seat, then go on WPTglobal.com, use the code Rampage for a $1,200 deposit bonus, and you can win your way to a $10,000 seat this December, all the way from, I think, like 200 bucks. They got satellites from $5 to $50, 200 and even 1Ks. So if you want to get in for a cheaper price, feel free to do that. And I'm looking forward to seeing everyone there. Click the link down in the description below if you want to join the WPT Global Streets and see me on the felt there. And if not, hopefully I'll see you in Vegas this December. So another two hours of card death goes by and now a more playable hand. Jack nine of spades in the small blind. I raise it up to 1600 and get called by the straddle. We see a flop of 335 rainbow, pretty low paired flop. Not a whole lot going for me right now. So I start off with a check and then you chant throws out a bet of $1,200. This player is known for being quite aggressive here. And I think I have a lot of over pairs here that would check raise and also have lots of possibilities with my hand here right now, considering I have over cards, I have a backdoor flush draw and um, yeah, we're just we're just gonna go for it here. I check raise the four thousand, trying to apply as much pressure on a five or maybe even ace high. If he has a three in his hand for trips, then he's loving life anyways. But here I make it four thousand dollars, and my opponent makes the call, so he's definitely not scared. Not gonna back down just yet. We see a turn, which is the ten of hearts. Here, I think. I mean, if I'm gonna have jack nine, then I easily could have a hand like jack ten or queen ten or really anything, to be honest. So still trying to rep the strong hands I have, like over pairs, or maybe now if it top pair, I continue with another bet of 8,500. Sizing up here, betting pretty large at this point, these pots are getting quite substantial, and Yushan ends up making the call with his pair again. All right, he's gonna make us try to earn it. We have one more street to try to bluff him off. River is an ace. Well, that's pretty cool. If there's ever a card I would like to see, this is pretty good, especially when I'm bluffing. So I'm definitely going to keep bluffing. And I don't think I need to bet really big because that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If I had value on the flop return, then I wouldn't be betting super big on an ace that doesn't really hit me that often. So I'm going to go for it. I go half pot to $14,000. I mean, I could easily bet this with an ace I can have smaller pairs than an ace that's betting for value. So just fold you Chan, please fold trying to make a believable line and sadly he makes an incredible great call then i'm gonna lose this one couldn't get him to fold a five here because he shows the nine five off suit and that's gonna be the winner <sighs> calling with the nine five trying to send me back to working a nine to five we are one step closer doing that as i lose a massive pot and we're trying to crawl back shortly after i pick up an actually good hand Yu Chen raises and I make it more with ace queen. Seems like it's been quite some time since I've looked down at an actual really good hand. And then Doug decides to four bet to about 11 and a half thousand. Weird happening on the stream here. It looks seems like the stream cut out. So I make the call and you guys don't really see the action, which comes jack 10 three rainbow. Action goes check check here on this flop. And now the stream is turned back on. Where we see the turn is a board pairing 10. 
Honestly, here, I'm a little bit confused here with Doug's check on the flop, but I'm thinking whether I can bluff here or not. I think with ace high, I just have a pretty decent hand to check here. No need to turn my ace queen into a bluff. I still have over cards, still have a straight draw, all those fun stuff. Anyways, I check it over to Doug and he fires out 17,000 and I just go back and forth with what I want to do. I have a straight draw here, but sometimes that might not be good. I think ace queen is a better hand to call with than maybe a hand like pocket nines or some sort. Anyways, I'm feeling a little stubborn at this point, clearly, because I call the 17,000. You see, it's probably not the best call as I'm drawing quite slim, but the river is the six. It's not the king that I wanted to see. I check it over to Doug and then he fires out 39K. Oh my God goodness. Everything just seems a little bit off about this hand facing a really big bet on the river. The stream's cutting out, Doug's checking the flop. I don't really have a good hand at all, but I can't help myself with being just a little bit curious. And at the end of the day, I chalk myself into doing something responsible, which is a fold and hope for a better spot. As you can see on the graphics, thank goodness I folded this one because Doug basically had the nuts with trips. So nice hand, Doug. I did not pay you an extra 39K, but I still gave you a good chunk of change. So now here we are, hour eight of the stream. It's nearing the end of this nine hour stream here and things clearly haven't really gone my way the past few hours, but time to bounce back, time to attempt to make some more money here. Mariano opened things up and I three bet the king queen suited. And once again, Doug wakes up with the hand and four bets to 18,000. I really don't like playing out of position against this guy, but it seems like we're going to have to battle and try to do it because I'm stuck. So I make the call for 18,000 and it's time to see a good flop. Please, it comes 10, 8, 8, 2 spades. This is, this is a good one to be fair. Wow. Hitting a spade here and giving myself a chance to crawl out of the hole completely would be awesome as I'm basically stuck about $30,000 at this point in the session. I check it over to Doug and he throws out a bet of 10,000. I'm not folding anything, of course. Two over cards with the flush draw. Spade me, dealer. One time, turn is the five of hearts. That is not quite it. Not what I'm looking to see. So action's gonna go check, check, luckily. So I get to see a free river and it's the ace of diamonds. <sighs> ace of spades would have been so, so much better. And I don't think this ace is one of those cards I can bluff on here. So I check it over to Doug. He quickly checks this back and has the winner with top pair. And just like that, a $57,000 pot goes to him. I say goodbye to more money. And this hand is going to conclude probably the longest stream I've ever played on. I'm dead tired at the end of it all. It was a very fun start in the beginning, but a very unfortunate finish at the end when the stakes got bumped up a little bit. But let's go to the outro. All right, reporting back. Uh, nine hours of play. Not a whole lot of good the last couple hours when the game got bigger. Funny how like bad few hours ruins the weekend. It happens. In for 300, out for 245. <sighs> Lame. Also unfortunate to the people who bought action on Stakings this one. Not, not a fun, not a fun hand. Uh, not a fun session. Just kept not having it. And on all the big pots, continued to not have it. Or just enough to lose more money, basically. <sighs> Unfortunate, but always nice to be in Austin. And that's it, a little bummed about it, but that's how poker goes. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And that's why we call it gambling. <laughs> uh, uh, those are the results, not a fun one, but it is what it is. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I'm playing Hustler all uh, for a whole week or something like that. So I've got a couple Hustler videos, more high stakes cash games on the way. So this is not the end. There's always more to come and um, hoping to bounce back. So good luck us. And sitting next to Doug Polk on the on his uh, right the whole time, not a good recipe to win usually. But it is what it is. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time. Later. Hit that like button because sympathy likes are always good for the channel. It makes me feel better. Peace.